Welcome my friends. I have a special video for you today. My top 10 Easter wreaths. These wreaths are constructed using different materials and techniques. Let me show you how to make them. For today's project, we're going to be using one of the egg wreath forms that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need some chunky pink chenille yarn. And I picked this up from Walmart. One skein will be plenty. In fact, you'll have quite a bit left over to use on other projects. So if you have maybe some white that you have left over from a project, you can use that as well. But today, because we're doing it for Easter, I wanted to do it in the pink. Now, I've just cut a section off so it's easier for me to work with. And to get started with this, we're going to be wrapping the two inner bars on the wreath all the way around. And to get it started, I'm just going to hot glue it right here to the wreath form at where the crossbar is. Kind of lay that down, make sure it gets attached well. And this is why you want to cut down a smaller piece because you have to wrap it around those two bars. And it'll just make your life a little bit easier. And then just simply wrap the two bars. You can tack it down with a little bit of hot glue wherever you feel that you need to. If you feel that it's slipping or moving and not giving you the coverage that you need. Now, if you're unable to find any of the thick chenille yarn, you can always use regular yarn. It's just going to take you a lot longer to cover those two bars. I have my pink chenille yarn all attached and I'm really happy. I got good coverage. I can't see those bars. And I really do like this uh, yarn and ribbon wreath because it looks really nice. If you have a glass door, it looks good on both sides. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the ribbon, and I picked up these two ribbons from Dollar Tree. Uh, both of them are in their Easter section this year, and they are two and a half inches at three yards. So I have this really pretty multicolored plaid, and this really pretty one with uh, the silhouettes of the bunnies and the eggs, and it has a little bit of glitter on it. I thought both of these would look really pretty with the pink chenille yarn. You will need two to three rolls of each color and I will let you know at the end how many you're going to need. You want to cut your ribbon into strips of six inches and dovetail both ends. Now to dovetail your ends is really easy. I usually do two ribbons at a time. Just want to fold the sides together, keep them nice and even. And then where the fold is, that's where you want to start. And I usually come up about a half inch and then cut down to the point. You want to do that to both sides. And that gives you a really nice dovetail on either end. I have two rolls of each ribbon cut. And we're going to be attaching one ribbon to the outer ring and the other ribbon to the inner ring. And I want my really pretty bunny ribbon with the eggs here on the inside. And to attach these on that first inner ring, you want to wrap your ribbon around. Take a little bit of hot glue and place it in the center. Pull your ribbon together and then kind of scrunch the base. It should take up about an inch worth of space. Just hold it a minute so that glue can set up and hold the ribbon in place. 
and then you can move on to the next one. Now the amount of ribbon that you're going to need will depend on how tightly you want your ribbons next to each other. Now if you don't like, if you think an inch is too much, then give yourself uh, less space, scrunch it together even more. But I think an inch is sufficient, it gives me the look that I'm looking for. So again, you just kind of pull them together once you have the glue down and then scrunch the base. Now I'm going to go all the way around this inner bar here with this ribbon. Once I'm completed with that, I'll come back and show you what it looks like and then we'll do the same thing on this outer ring with the other ribbon. And that will look so pretty because this will be behind that. I think that'll look very pretty on this wreath. I have my first row of ribbons attached and I'm really happy. I love that color combination. I think it looks so pretty next to the pink. Now this little bit of space in between bothers me, so we're going to fix that. Turn it over to the back. Then we're going to take another piece of the pink chenille yarn and we're going to glue it right around that area so it will cover up that space from the front but it'll look completely cohesive from the front. So just add a small amount of hot glue in that area and then place down your chenille yarn. I have my extra piece of chenille that I glued on the back and now there is no vacancy all the way around and everything blends in. I'm really happy with that. Even on the back you can't tell that I glued on that piece. It still looks nice and cohesive. So now we're going to move on to the next ring and we're going to be adding our plaid. And you do it the same way. Just feed it up around that one ring. Add your little bit of hot glue and then scrunch it together. Now I've started to attach my second ribbon and I'm really liking that. You can see a good half inch to an inch of it around the base. Now to do that, um, I didn't do it evenly. As I pull it through here on the ring, This top piece is longer than the bottom because I wanted it to come out a little further than it was. So that's nice. You can easily adjust it to show how much or how little of that second ribbon that you like. And again, just pull it together, pull over and scrunch it. And just keep adding on that outside ring until you work your way all the way around. I have all my ribbon attached and I'm really happy with how both ribbons look together, especially with that really pretty soft pink center. You will need two of the laser wood words that you can pick up in the Easter section. They come in a package that looks like this. There are several to choose from and you get three words per package. You'll need an Easter and a bunny. You want to get a good coat of a vintage white onto both of these. This is Folk Art Vintage White 515E. You'll also need one of these bunnies. They're one of the new signs that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. So this is how they come. Now uh, I'm going to be using the white bunny. They also have one that has a wood finish bunny. If that's all you can find, you can use that one as well, but it's up to you. We're only going to be using the bunny for our wreath today. Now I want to add a little something here to our bunny. And I have one of these uh, little cotton balls that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. 
This is the size that comes 18 to a package. And I just want to glue it here on the tail. I want to give them a nice big fluffy white tail. Of course, you can skip this part if you don't want to give him a fluffy tail. That's fine. He looks just as cute with this tail as it was. Now to attach our bunny and our two words, we're going to be attaching them with a combination of the Aileen's Original Tacky Glue and Hot Glue. I really like this glue, especially when using it with wreaths because this is weather resistant once it fully dries, but it does take a full 24 hours to dry. That's why I use it in combination with hot glue because the hot glue will set it up and hold your project so you can continue to work on it. Then you just need to wait 24 hours and then you can put it outside and it will be weather resistant. You don't need to worry about any of your embellishments falling off. Now I want to place my bunny kind of in the middle, maybe just a little lower than middle. I'm going to place Easter here at the top and bunny down here at the bottom. I think that looks absolutely adorable. And then once you find your placement, you just want to get this glued down. Enjoying today's content? Would you like to see more? Make sure to hit that subscribe button and when the notification bell pops up, if you hit that too, YouTube should let you know every time I upload new content. And I do add new content to my channel several times a week. Now we're going to apply the hanger here on the back and I'm just going to use part of the jute ribbon that uh, kept the sign together. So I cut a piece long enough and I'm going to attach it here to the yarn in the back and I'm going to do either side of the center. This will make it easier for me to be able to um, center my wreath and make sure that I'm able to get it to hang straight. And now I have a nice hanger for my wreath. And here you go. We are all complete. I'm very happy with the end result. I love these beautiful spring colors that we get to use for spring and Easter. For today's craft, you're going to need one of the new bunny wreath forms that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. Uh, it is a floral garden product and it is 17.3 inches in diameter. You will also need a piece of cardboard or a piece of the foam board that you can also pick up at Dollar Tree. Or if you have just a piece of cardboard um, that's big enough that you can trace it out, that's what you want to do. You want to trace it out and cut it out. Now if you have a really good pair of scissors, you can use scissors on the foam board, but what I find works best is a nice, sharp utility knife. You're also going to need one of these really soft automotive chamois that you can pick up in the hardware section. Now the chamois have uh, two different sides. This side is very short and compact. And then the other side is much longer and fluffier. Now this is the side that I want out because we're trying to make it look like a bunny. So I want that longer, fluffier side. Now one is perfect to completely cover your frame, which is what you're looking for. So make sure that the side that you want is facing down. Now 
Okay, so what we're going to do is basically just kind of cut this and glue this onto the frame. And then uh, I'm going to leave the bottom section here open because we're also going to stuff this area a little bit. And uh, I need to get everything kind of glued down and figure out how much extra material I need for that. So we're going to start up here where the ears are. The first thing that I'm going to do is kind of cut down the center here where the two ears are to make sure that I get enough to wrap on either side. And then I want to stop about a half inch before I get to this ring right here. And then what you want to do is from that point, cut to the corner on this side and cut to the corner on this side. That way that little piece you can glue straight down and then that gives you enough to glue around. So just pack that little piece down first. Just add a small amount of hot glue. If you need to, this is a really good tool. It's a silicone scraper spatula made by Betty Crocker. You can find it over in the kitchen section. This works excellent for gluing any hot glue because if anything gets on this, once it dries, it just wipes off. And it also helps so that you don't burn yourself, which does happen. I'm just adding glue right onto the wire and folding over the fabric. Okay, so I have all this excess fabric, so I'm just going to trim that off. I don't want it bulky in the back. Okay, so I glued the inside on this side and I'm going to do the same thing to this side because I want to make sure that the fabric doesn't shift and I have enough to cover my ears. Around the bottom that's going to be much easier but because the ears are shaped differently I need to make sure I have enough here and here to cover those areas. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing all the way around and just slowly trim and fold over and then remove any excess fabric. You only need about a half an inch to fold over to make sure that that stays secure. I have both of my ears fully attached and I have all the way down to the last section here. Now the reason why I didn't do it all the way around is because I need to leave a little bit of slack here because I want to stuff it so it's not real flat from the front. So I'm very loosely going to fold this over and glue it down so I have some excess room there to stuff it. Now you can see I can stuff a little bit of stuffing in there because from the front it looks very flat, but if it has a little bit of stuffing that's going to look better. So that looks nice. So your backing will lay nice and flat. And then this will glue on top and then we'll stuff. Now I keep all my old pillows so that I can use the stuffing and that's what I'm going to use. 
This is just a cheap old pillow that I had, but it's perfect for this. As a crafter, you get to the point to where you're afraid to throw anything away in case you might be able to use it for craft. <laughs> At least that's the way it's turning out for me. <laughs> okay, so you want to line this up. And what I'm going to do is I want to get my ears glued on before I start to put any stuffing in because I want to make sure that this lines up correctly. Now remember, I put the X so I know which way goes towards. Okay. Once that's done, then I can start hot gluing and I'm just going to run hot glue all the way around the edge and get it glued on the ears. I want to leave the area down here on the bottom so I can lift it up and put my stuffing in. Okay, so I have my ears completely glued on and I have put in all of that stuffing and I've made sure that it's nice and full. I like that shape. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish gluing down my backing. And I'm just slowly going to work my way, adding a bead of hot glue all the way around and getting that attached. My base is fully secure and I have a nice little puffy bunny here. I also went ahead and twisted and made a loop out of a pipe cleaner and hot glued it on. That's what I'm going to use to hang it. Go ahead and set this aside. You also need one of the Dollar Tree's bunny tails. And they've carried these for the past several years. Let's go ahead and take the clip off and trim off the uh, tag here. Now, if you cannot find one of the bunny tails in your store, Dollar Tree also sells over in the Crafter Square section, also in the Easter section, large white pom-poms. You could use one of these. You also will have several scraps left over. Uh, you can take one of the larger pieces and then stuff in the smaller, glue it together and make a little tail that way. So you have a lot of different options of what you can do for the tail if you can't find one of those. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and attach my tail and I don't want it too low because he's supposed to be running. So I'm gonna put it about here, about two inches up. Just add a good amount of hot glue so he stays. Cute already. Next, you're going to need a package of these really cute little paw prints. They are felt paw prints, and you get 10 pieces in a package, which is a great deal. Of course, you're going to need two of them for his feet. So just play with it for a little while until you decide exactly where you want, you know, how you want his feet angled, how high, not too high, not too low. I'm thinking something along this. Very cute. Once you get your placement and you're happy with that, go ahead and hot glue those down. Doesn't that look absolutely adorable? We're going to work on the bow now. 
I have a little bit of this really pretty pink ribbon and this really pretty egg ribbon that I picked up from Dollar Tree. And this is brand new this year. This is the Offre brand. I know Walmart and Michaels also carries this brand. And this ribbon is one and a half inches. And then I'm also going to use this one that I also picked up at Dollar Tree. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Has all the right color tones in it. And this is five eighths of an inch at nine feet. You're also gonna need half a pipe cleaner. Now I have about 25 inches of the egg ribbon and 25 inches of my pink ribbon. And I wanna start with the egg ribbon because this is what I want in the background. So I'm just gonna find my center and then I'm going to make a loop. going to make a loop on the other side. You kind of fold it over like that and you turn it over so your tails both sides of the good side should be facing forward. Okay. Okay, so just go ahead and clip that. And we're going to do the same thing with the pink ribbon, but we're going to make the loops a little smaller. So again, find the center, okay, hold the center, and then make a loop. Take the other and fold it around the back and make another loop. And then just check, make sure your tails are the same, the loops are the same. Set on top and clip. And now I'm going to do this, and I want two loops on either side of this with some tails. So I'm going to do my loops first. Good thing about this ribbon is it's nice on both sides. So I have my two loops. And I'm going to do it again. I do want some tails with that and I want double tails. And I'm going to measure my tails at eight inches. So I'm going to cut two pieces at eight inches. Okay, find the center of those. You want to put the tails underneath your bows here, your uh, these bows. You have everything stacked. You want to scrunch right down the center. Take your pipe cleaner, wrap it right around that center, and pull it to the back. Get a nice grip, pinch right at the base and twist. something isn't laying right go right up to where the pipe cleaner is grab it twist it and move it to where you want it that's why i like to hold on where your pipe cleaner is that way you won't pull anything too much okay once you get that fluffed you can go ahead and trim your tails 
I don't want my tails too long. So my two larger ribbon, I'm going to cut them the same length. And I'm just going to cut them at an angle. And then with my smaller ribbon, I'm also going to cut the tails just at an angle. So you want to give that a couple good twists and then trim off your excess pipe cleaners. And then just push it down so it's nice and flat. Okay, so your bow should look something like that. Okay, so let's attach our bow. And I am just going to be hot gluing the bow on. You just need to decide how high you want it. Do you want it right where the ears are? Do you want it a little lower? So just play with it until you decide where you like it. I do like it right up at the top there, so that's where I'm going to glue it, right here at the base of the ears. Add some hot glue there and get it placed. So just play with your bow until you get your ribbon to lay the way that you like. Now the final touch for this wreath, I'm going to add one of these really pretty little eggs. Uh, you can get this egg garland at Dollar Tree. I'm only going to be using one and I'm going to be using one of the pink ones. Now, if you can't find this garland at your Dollar Tree, you can always use their little foam eggs and use one of those. But I think that will look really pretty glued right in the center. And there you go. We are all done. I think my bunny butt wall decor came out absolutely adorable. You'll need one of the cross wreath forms that you can get from Dollar Tree. You will need four rolls of white deco mesh and two rolls of light purple. You will also need one and a half packages of white pipe cleaners. For this wreath, you're going to want to cover the back because of the method that we're using, you're going to have a lot of ties all the way up and down the back. So you want to cover it. One, so that it looks pretty and two, so that it doesn't scratch your door or wall. Now I'm gonna cover the back with the Crafter Square felt and this is in white. So you just wanna trace it out and then once you get it traced out, you wanna cut it out and you wanna cut it just slightly larger than what you've traced. When I cut my mesh, I like to use a rotary cutter. This one I picked up from Dollar Tree. They now carry it in their crafter square section and it works very well. Uh, this single cutter I've used on about 10 wreaths so far and it still cuts like a charm. I use a self-healing mat and then a ruler. The ruler just helps keep the mesh nice and straight and doesn't let it move. You want to go ahead and cut your uh, mesh at six inches. So I just line it up with uh, my ruler and my cutting mat. This makes it really easy and then I can just slide 
and it holds everything in place so I get a really nice clean cut. The method that we're going to be using today is called the petal method. To make your petals, you want to grab diagonal corners and you pull them together like this. And you take one corner, you fold it over the front so that the points meet. Take the other side, fold it over so that you have all the points together. And then you want to scrunch in each side. I kind of roll mine in to hide all those cut ends. So it gets all pinched in. So you look like you have a petal at the top. And you take your pipe cleaner, wrap it around right at the base there, pull it to the back, get it nice and tight and twist. And that is what your little petal should look like. I'll show you one more time. You take your corners diagonally, you pull them together. And you take one side and you fold it over the front so that the corners meet. Do the same thing to the other side. It looks like that. And then where the cut ends come up, you just kind of roll in or scrunch in those sides. If you get anything weird, just make And wrap your pipe cleaner right around the base. I always fold mine over so I can get a nice tight grip and twist. And that's what your petal looks like. And your end should come out the back, which is the flat side. You want the petal part to show in the front. To attach it to the wreath form, you're going to start in the very middle at the bottom. You're going to place the first one here. And then you're going to place one on either side. And you just take your pipe cleaners and you wrap them around the two bars. Pull it to the back. Make sure that that's in the middle of that space. And then give it a good twist. Pull that down. Now on the two on the corners, once you get them twisted on, you need to take the ends and wrap them around the outside bar and back in on the corner. The reason why is otherwise your little Pedal there will pull off and then it won't lay correctly. Okay, so you want the center one to be the furthest down and then one on either side. This is what your first row should look like. The center one should be longer than the ones on either side. Now don't worry about these ends. As you move up, you are not going to be able to see them. This is a stacking method. You're going to be stacking on top the other ones and tying down those ends as you go. Okay, so you start with a row of all white and then your next row, you always do the center bar first and then you do the two on the outside. You're gonna add one purple right in the middle. So it lays like that. And then as you attach the purple, you'll want to pull in the back all those ends from the row below and tie them together. Then you'll do a white and another white. Then you'll do another row of white. And then on the next row, you'll do white in the middle and purple on either side. 
So you have a solid row of white, and then the next row will have purple and white. The next row will have all white. The next row will have purple and white. And you continue all the way up. Now you'll work this way from the bottom all the way up to the center. Then you turn it around. You start at the top, you work down to the center. And then when you get to the sides here, because this is not as wide as I think it should be for how long the cross is. On the ends here, I'm going to do a different little bundle to extend that length a little bit. And I'll show you that once we work on this area. So I'm going to work on this area and get some done. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So I've been working on my cross. I have uh, just almost two sections done. I'd say that's one and a half sections. I think it looks really pretty. But as you can see, I have a row of white, one purple, a row of white, two purples, a row of white, one purple, a row of white, and two purples. I don't want a whole lot of purple on that. I just want it to accent it because of the flowers that I'm putting in the center. So here on the sides, I want to extend this. So we're gonna do a little something different on the first row on either end of the sides here. So on this one, you take a same six by six piece, grab either corner, give it a little tug, set it down and then roll it from one corner diagonally to the other. So it looks like that. Then you're gonna fold that and you don't want them to be even. You want one to be longer. The bottom one should be longer than the top one. So it's folded. Take your pipe cleaner, wrap it around that end, pull it nice and tight and twist. And that's going to help to extend the length on the side. So the first one, just like before, go ahead and attach it right in the middle. And you want to go ahead and place one on each side. And there you go. You have the longer ones. This is going to help extend your sides. From this point, you just continue like you did the rest of the way. You make the petals and you place them through the same arrangement with the purple and the white. But you always want to start at the end and work your way to the center. When you're done, this small square won't have anything in it. You'll just have a bunch of ends. I got my base all done. I'm really happy with it. The only thing that I changed was here on the sides. Instead of doing the white really long, I did the purple. And I'm really happy with that. Now, as you can see here in the center, we still have an opening. That's okay. I'm going to put my florals there. But before we move on to that, we need to cover up the back. Now you can see all the mess. So we're going to cover all this up. So get it lined up where you want it. I also added a hanger right here up at the top. I just wrapped it around the two bars in the middle, pulled it up to the top and made a loop. So that's what I'm going to use to hang it. You want to make sure you attach that before you cover up the back get it placed and then once you have the placement just add some a uh, bead of hot glue along the edge and put your felt down i'm really happy with my cross i got the back all glued down now the felt from Dollar Tree is pretty thin, so if you have a thicker material, 
or a better quality felt, I would go that route. But this will be sufficient for me for right now. Now we're going to work on the center section here and getting this covered up. I'm going to be using some of these beautiful iris that I picked up from Dollar Tree. You get five blooms per stem, so you will need one stem. I'm also going to be adding a bow and I'm going to be using this ribbon. I picked this up from the 99 cent store in their Easter section. But anything that has a little bit of purple in there that will go along with the purple in the wreath will work. I just went with a floral because I wanted something neutral. I didn't want to do bunnies or eggs or anything like that. You're also going to need one full length pipe cleaner. To get started on your bow, you want to make a center loop. And you want to scrunch it together there at the bottom. Make sure that center is big enough to open up. Then you'll want to add another loop on either side, keeping it scrunched there in the center. Now you do need to be aware this ribbon has a good side and a bad side. You want to make sure your good side is showing. So you have three loops. You want to go ahead and add one more loop to each side. So once you have your four loops and your center loop, pull out a piece for the tail. I'm going to take that end and loop it up. So you should have one large loop for the tails and then five loops for your bow, one for the center and two for either side. Take your pipe cleaner, you want to wrap it around twice. You need this to be really snug, you don't want it to slide out. Get that nice and tight, twist. The long loop is going to be your tail, so cut that in half. And then you can fluff out your bow and decide how long you want your tail. And that's what your bow should look like. So I'm going to start with placing my bow and I'm going to glue that right into the center. Now I cut off the long pipe cleaners and then twist it down and fold it down the ends. I want to make sure that my bow does not come undone. I'm just going to add a good amount of hot glue on the back here and place my bow. Next, I'm just going to add some of my blooms around my bow, focusing mainly on the top and the bottom here. Just add some hot glue to your stem and go ahead and place them. You just want to make sure that your stem is hidden.
You can add whatever florals you like. I just really liked these purple iris. I thought they matched rather well with the mesh and the ribbon. Okay, so I'm just gonna play with that and then I'll come back and show you the finished product. I got my bow and my florals on. I'm really happy with the placement. I think it looks really pretty. I used four of the iris blooms. I put two on the top and two on the bottom. I decided not to use any of the leaves. I thought they kind of clashed. To get started, you're going to need one of the 14 inch wreath forms that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need several packages of decorative mesh. I am going to be mixing uh, several different colors and different textures. So I have a few rolls of the snow covered mesh. I have blue and pink and purple and some yellow. And then I have some of the regular mesh and I have pink, green, white, purple, and yellow. Now this wreath is a really good wreath to use up any uh, half rolls that you might have or leftovers that you have because we're mixing so many different textures and so many different colors. This is the perfect wreath to use up all your extra scraps as long as they're in the correct color tone. For the snow covered mesh, I like to stack mine to make it easier to cut so I have three different colors here, blue, pink, and purple. I lay them on top of each other. It just makes quick work of cutting up your mesh. You wanna cut the snow covered mesh at six inches. You will need three pieces of each color per bundle. You're also going to need some pipe cleaners cut in half. Now on the snow covered mesh, we're going to be doing the curl method and it's very easy. You just want to roll it up. It usually takes about uh, four rolls. Hold it in between your finger. You'll want three of the same color in each bunch. So I put the one, the first one in the center and then I crisscross. Place your pipe cleaner, pull it to the back. Make sure you're in the center there. I like to pull up and get it nice and tight, pinch at the base and give it a twist. Because this mesh is more like tulle, it's very light in color. So that's why you want to do a bundle of three so that you get that color tone. I'll show you one more time. And there's your little bundle. For your regular mesh, you'll want to cut pieces at 15 inches. Uh, for this, we're going to be doing the folded ruffle method. And I want my bundles to be large and poofy. So that's why I'm measuring at 15 inches. You want to fold it over itself by about an inch to an inch and a half. Press it down and then you start at one end and you scrunch it right up the center where it's folded. Pinch it in the center and wrap your pipe cleaner. And then you have a cute little bundle like that that looks like a butterfly, a nice big fluffy one. And this is nice because all of your cut ends are folded in and tucked together in the back. So you have very little to no frame with this method. 
Now with this mesh, this mesh does not fray at all. That's why I like it. It works very well for cut method. I like to use the snow covered mesh when I do the curl method or the standard ruffle method. Both look very pretty when using this mesh. I'll show you one more time how to do the folded ruffle. You take your piece of mesh, cut it 15 inches. You want to fold it over itself by about an inch to an inch and a half. Then you press down. You want to make sure you hold that as you scrunch right up the center where the two pieces have folded over. Wrap your pipe cleaner around the center and pull it to the back. Get nice and tight and pinch right at the base. And then you have your cute little butterfly. Now when you attach your bundles to your wreath form, you just want to mix up the colors and the different textures. I think it looks very pretty and very spring. And when you attach them, you're going to be attaching them to the two bars in the middle. And I've been putting about 11 bundles in each section. So attach your bundles by simply putting your pipe cleaners on either side of the two bars in the middle and then giving it a good twist. I then like to pull my pipe cleaners together and I push them forward. Once you get all your bundles in there, you will not be able to see your pipe cleaners from the front, but it does keep the back of your wreath looking nice and clean. And there you go. We have our base all done. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm very happy with how thick and full it looks. For our sign, I'm going to be using this gnome sign that I found at Dollar Tree. They have three different ones to choose from. Uh, you can use whichever one that you want. The colors that I chose for the base of my wreath came from this sign. I pulled out the pinks, the purple, the green, and the yellow. So whatever sign you use, you want to make sure that you pull the colors out that are in the sign. Now to prep your sign, you want to go ahead and remove the jute cord that they had to hang it. And you're going to need some floral wire. I like to use the floral wire that I get from Dollar Tree and I prefer the silver because this blends into pretty much any color. So you just want to cut two long pieces, put them through the holes at the top here where the jute cord was, pull it to the back and twist it. That's what you're going to use to attach it at the top. And then here at the bottom I just hot glued two full length pipe cleaners on either side at the bottom. This way I can get my sign fully secure in four areas. It won't move at all on my wreath. I like to place my signs right on top of my wreath. I like them to be the focal point. And to attach that, all you do is you take either the floral wire or the pipe cleaners. You move your mesh aside until you can get down to the wreath form in the back. And then you just tie it onto the wreath form. When you initially tie it down, you don't want to tie it too tight because otherwise you won't be able to adjust it. Once you get it adjusted and you know that you have it in the position that you want, then you can go ahead and tie down and tighten up your pipe cleaners. I have my sign attached. He is nice and secure. Once you get him tied down, you want to twist and cut and then tuck down your pipe cleaners and your wire. That way you won't have anything on the back that will scratch. The reason why I like to use a combination of floral wire and pipe cleaners to attach my sign is because the hot glue that you have the pipe cleaners uh, attached to your sign with is very temperature sensitive. So if you put the wreath outside and it gets too hot or too cold, that hot glue can fail. If that happens, you still have the floral wire holding your sign on so it's not going to fall off. We're going to work on our bow now. All of these ribbons I picked up from Dollar Tree in their Easter section. So this first one has the white background and really pretty little colored eggs on it. 
And this is 5 eighths of an inch at 9 feet. This one is just that really pretty plaid. And this again is 5 eighths of an inch at 9 feet. Then I have this really pretty light blue ribbon. This is the Offre brand. And this is one and a half inches at six feet. And then this is the Crafter Square. I thought this was really pretty. This is new this year in their Easter section. And this is their two and a half inch at, let's see, three yards. We're gonna be using the Easy Bow Maker today. And I'm gonna start with the whitest ribbon, which is my bunny ribbon. Now, I don't want my tails very long, so I'm only gonna measure them out at six inches. So measure to six inches, pinch. And then you want to place it in between the two large dowel rods. Now this ribbon is only nice on one side. So once you come through the two dowel rods, you need to twist your ribbon so that the nice side is facing down. Now I'm going to measure out three loops on each side at four inches. Once you have your three loops on each side, measure out your tails at six inches. Now we're going to move to the baby blue. On the baby blue, again, I'm going to measure my tails at six inches inch and push down. Now this is the same on both sides so it's up to you if you want to twist. I find that if I twist it once I come through it just makes it easier for the bow to stay together as I'm working with it. And these I'm going to measure at three inches and I'll do two loops on either side at three inches. And next I'm going to move to my plaid ribbon. Again, measure your tails at six inches. And then on these, I'm only gonna make my loops at two inches and I'm gonna do two on either side. Now we're going to move on to the egg ribbon, six inch tails, and this one I'm only going to do one loop on either side at two inches. And this only has a pattern on one side, so you need to make sure to twist it once you come through. Okay, once you have one loop on either side, you're going to do one more small loop. This is going to be your center loop. And it only needs to be about an inch to an inch and a half. And 
Once you get it pulled through, you want to twist. And then you're going to bring it back through the small dowel rod and the large dowel rod in the very front. Then measure out your tail and trim. You will need one full length pipe cleaner. Go ahead and slide that underneath. Bring it right next to the dowel rods there. And then you want to bring it up. And hold it as you pull up as you pull up your bow you want to make sure you keep that stacked and wrap the pipe cleaner around the center there to make sure it's nice and secure and pull it to the back Once you get it to the back, get it nice and tight and give it a good twist. You want to leave the pipe cleaners on. That's what you're going to use to attach it. Okay, and just pull your tails down, open up your loops. This is approximately what your bow should look like. Now I will fluff it out more and I will trim the tails once I get it onto my wreath. So I'm going to place my bow right up here a little off center. All you do is go ahead and separate the deco mesh and you feed your pipe cleaners through down to the frame in the back and attach it. I got my bow on. I think it looks absolutely adorable. Now the final item that I'm going to add to my wreath is this really pretty pick that I picked up from craftoutlet.com. I thought that was really gorgeous. Now I'm going to cut each of these off and place them. And I'm just going to add some hot glue on the bottom and then feed it into the mesh wherever I like. I really like that they're on wire because I want them to stick out. I don't want them to be completely submerged into the wreath. So you just feed it in and then you can adjust them however you want. I'm going to get in the rest of these and then I'll come back and show you the finished product. And there you go. We are all done. I think these glitter balls were the perfect final touch for this wreath. Because uh, the color and the texture in the mesh, I didn't want to cover too much of that up. I wanted that to show. In today's crafting adventure, you're going to need one egg wreath form and one bunny wreath form. Both of these came from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need some large chunky yarn. I'm going to be using the roving yarn by Mainstay. I actually did pick this up from Dollar Tree, but it was a closeout from Walmart. So you can pick something up similar at Walmart. You can also use the chunky chenilles uh, yarn on this project. Anything uh, of the yarn that is nice and thick will work. I'm going to wrap both of my forms in the yarn before I attach them together. And here on the ears, I'm just going to be wrapping around the individual wires because I'm planning on backing it with a really pretty fabric that's going to match. Now before we start to wrap our wreath frames, you want to take the bunny frame lay it down and trace out the ears. You're also going to want to mark what's the front, 
and right and left. That's just going to help you um, when we go to cut out our fabric. Next you want to go ahead and trim out your bunny ears so that you have a pattern to work with. Now I pulled out a piece of my yarn and I cut it just to make it easier for me to work with as I wrap. And I'm going to start right here on the crossbar. I'm just going to turn it over to the back. Add some hot glue there to the crossbar and lay down my yarn. And then just slowly work your way around and wrap your base. If you have any trouble of it slipping or sliding and not laying the way you want it to, just add a little dab of hot glue to the back to secure it so it doesn't slip. This wreath is fun and easy to make, a perfect wreath for a beginner. The finished wreath is about 32 inches in length and approximately 13 inches wide. I have my bunny head all wrapped and I'm very happy. It looks so pretty. Now this, uh, the roving yarn does tend to kind of get feathery. If that happens while you're working on it, just kind of roll everything around so that it goes back to looking a little bit more smooth. It's just the type of yarn that it is. If you use the chunky chenille yarn instead, you won't have that problem. But I really like this. I like the way that it looks because I'm looking for that neutral farmhouse style with this wreath. So now I'm working on my egg wreath form and I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm just wrapping my base with the yarn. Now I have both of my frames wrapped and I still have a good amount of the skein left. Now to attach the two together, we're going to be using some of the floral wire you can pick up at Dollar Tree. This is 26 gauge and you get 100 feet for $1.25. You will need to cut two pieces at about six inches. And we're going to be attaching them together. Now you're going to come down about two bars there. So you have the outer bar and then the first inner bar. That's where you're going to be attaching it. And you want the bunny head on the top. And you just use the floral wire to feed that through. You want to do one on either side to get it nice and secure. So I have my wire fed through the bottom and the top. I have the bunny head in the front. So now I'm just going to pull it together and give a good twist and make sure that's nice and secure. Trim off your excess wire. Pull it together and then tuck it down so it's nestled inside the yarn and you can't see it. Now you want to do that to this side and this side to make sure that your bunny is nice and secure. Now that I have it wired together, I'm also going to hit a little bit of hot glue down here where they overlap. We are going to be putting a nice big bow here so you don't need to worry if your yarn gets messed up a little bit or the wire shows. We're going to cover that. I want to put a hanger on my bunny before I go any further. And I just cut a nice long piece of jute cord. And I'm going to tie it right here in between the ears and around the head. I'll pull my cord through. Tie my initial knot. Do it one more time. Okay. And I'm going to pull.
pull that so the knot is hidden in the back. I'm going to hot glue that down. And I'm just going to take a small piece of the yarn and hot glue that over the top just to hide it. Then I'm going to pull it together and I'm going to do another knot, but I'm going to make sure that knot is all the way down at the base there. Okay. And then that's what I'm going to use to hang my wreath. Now I pulled out a fat quarter from Dollar Tree and I really like the fabric here. I think it's going to really set off the wreath. And this is what we're going to put behind our ears. So you just need to turn it over and then take your paper ears. Now where you marked the X for the front and whether it's left or right, that should be facing down when you're tracing. And all I use is a regular pencil, number two pencil, and then just go over it so you get a nice clear. Then you also want to mark on the back which one's the left and which one's the right. When you cut it out, you want to leave a little bit of extra room, about a quarter of an inch all the way around. That's going to help you attach it to the ears. I'm working on attaching my fabric to the back of my ears. I already have the right side down, now I'm going to attach the left. Just want to lay it down, make sure that you have enough to cover everything. You want to start here at the tip and get your tip glued down. I like to use a silicone tool so that I do not burn myself. The best way to get this so that it's evenly stretched is to do down one side a couple inches, get that attached, and then do the other side. That way your fabric's not going to shift and when you get down to the bottom you'll still have enough fabric to cover both sides. You want to make sure that you leave your hanger out. Oh, I love the ears. I think they look absolutely adorable. Now here on the back, after you have it glued down, if you find any excess fabric, just take your scissors and go through and trim it up. But I'm very pleased with that. I got the exact look I was going for. You can set your bunny aside. We're going to work on our bow now. You're going to need two full length pipe cleaners. Now I'm going to be using this really pretty black and white buffalo check. Now I did pick this ribbon up from Dollar Tree, so it's not very thick, but you can pick up black and white buffalo check ribbon pretty much at any craft store. I'm also going to be using this really pretty ribbon I picked up at Hobby Lobby in their Easter section. I thought it was gorgeous, very neutral, and perfect for a farmhouse wreath. And this is 7 eighths of an inch at 10 yards. We're going to start here with the buffalo check. Now I want some nice long tails on this wreath, so I'm going to measure at 12 inches. And this ribbon is nice on both sides, so I don't have to worry about twisting. I'm going to measure my loops at 4 inches and I'm going to do two loops on either side at 4 inches. Thank you. 
I'm going to move to my smaller ribbon. Again, I'm going to measure my tails at 12 inches. But this ribbon is only nice on one side, so I need to twist once I come through. On your tails, the nice side of the ribbon should be facing up, but as you make your loops for your bow, the nice side of the ribbon should be facing down. And I'm going to make two loops on either side at about three inches. Then you want to take a full length pipe cleaner, feed it in on one side till you get next to the dowel rods. Pull that together. Push your bow down so everything's nice and secure. Take your pipe cleaner, I always wrap it around and pull it to the back. Pull nice and tight and give a good twist. Okay, and then just play with your loops. Get them open and adjusted. I always like to trim my tails once I get my bow onto my wreath. Just kind of hold it in the center there. I want to make sure that all my loops are going to be able to lay the way that I want them to before I add the center. Now here on the back you want to open up your pipe cleaners so that we can wrap our center. Just make sure that if you're using something that has a right side, like the bunny sitting, I want to make sure my bunny is sitting properly before I wrap it. And that's approximately what your bow should look like. We're going to be attaching our bow right here around the neck. I think that's going to look adorable. And you just want to use those pipe cleaners, wrap it around the neck and tie it off in the back. If your pipe cleaners are not long enough, add an additional pipe cleaner. Lay it down, just take the other two and wrap it around. Give a twist or two. And then you take the shorter one and wrap it around one of the longer ones. You do that on both sides. Then they're very secure together and you have plenty of pipe cleaner to attach your bow. Trim and tuck your pipe cleaners. Go ahead and fluff your bow and trim your tails to whatever length you like. Now I have my bow on and I've trimmed my tails. I decided to cut the smaller ribbon a little bit shorter than my longer ribbon. I cut that just at an angle and then I did dovetail the buffalo check. Now I want to add just a little bit more behind my bow. So I pulled out uh, two sprigs of the eucalyptus and this comes with a little bit of what looks like berries or like it's just getting ready to bloom. 
I really do like that. So I have two stems of that. I did pick this up from Amazon. And then I have one stem of this, which is a baby's breath. And I also picked this up from Amazon. So on your eucalyptus, you want to take it and kind of bend it. You want one to bend down this side and then the other one to bend down the other side. And then you just want to kind of play with it for a little bit. Adjust your leaves so that they're facing the right way. Make sure you can see your berries. And if anything pops off real easy like that, you want to hot glue it back on because you don't want it to fall off your wreath. Just a little dab of hot glue and then slide it back on. It won't go anywhere after that. And on the individual leaves, you can just kind of go down and twist at the bottom to get them to face the direction you want to. Okay, right where it attaches, just kind of twist it. Then we're going to be hot gluing this in and underneath the bow. Just like that. And then I trimmed the baby's breath here into the three individual stems that it had. And then you just want to kind of open them up so that you can see them. And I'm going to be hot gluing that on top. So it looks like that. I like that it adds just that little extra something something you want to do the same thing to the other side and here you go we are all done I absolutely love how my farmhouse bunny came out I love all the neutral colors and I really do love just that little bit of greenery and floral We're going to be using one of the 8 inch wreath forms that you can get at Dollar Tree. These come in a package of two. You're also going to need one roll of their dark purple mesh, one roll of their white mesh, and then you're also going to need one roll of their lavender mesh that has snow on it, and one roll of their white mesh that has snow on it. You're also going to need some pipe cleaners cut in half and you will want to cut your decorative mesh into strips of six inches. I have all my mesh cut into strips of six inches and I have some pipe cleaners cut in half. I'm going to be using my bow dabber to help me hold my bundles as I build them and we're going to be making two bundles today. We're going to be making this one with the two purple and one white, and then this one with the two white and one lavender. Now it's really easy to do the curl method. You just start at one end and kind of roll the mesh in. Now you don't want your curl to be too small. I usually go about the size of a fat cigar or a quarter. If you roll it too tight, what happens is your end sticks out and then you have more fraying. So in this bundle, you will need two pieces of the dark purple. And then one piece of the snow covered white mesh. I 
love the texture on these. The mix of the two different types of mesh gives an absolutely beautiful base. So just wrap your pipe cleaner around. You want to pull it to the back. You want your snow covered mesh to be on the top. So that is your first bundle. And then for your second bundle, you're going to do two pieces of the white topped with a piece of the lavender. Now to attach our bundles to our wreath form, we're going to be attaching them to the center bar and the outer bar. You just need to take your pipe cleaners, feed them on either side of those two bars, pull it together nice and snug and give a twist or two. And then I like to pull my pipe cleaners together and I push them forward and push over your bundle. This will help keep the back of your wreath looking nice and clean, and you're not going to see those once the front gets filled in. Now when you attach your, your bundles here, you're just going to be alternating between the two bundles as you work your way around the wreath form. But I really do like the two different meshes together. They add a lot of texture and the colors are just so pretty. Now on this wreath there are three sections and each section is between the two crossbars. You'll be placing between nine to ten bundles in each section depending on how many cuts you get and how many bundles you're able to make but that will fill in the base and give you a very beautiful and nicely textured base for our wreath. I have my base complete and I used every bit of those four rolls, but I'm really happy with the end result. I love the mixture of the two different types of mesh. It gives a very beautiful texture to the wreath and I really like the color combination as well. Now once you get your base done, some of the regular mesh here does fray. So you need to just go in and clean it up. Even the most expensive mesh will fray. So don't feel bad if you have to go in and do a little snip here and there to get rid of anything that may look funny. Even on the back, anything that you see that looks way too funny or fraying, just clean it up. The one thing about decorative mesh is you want to handle it the least amount. The more you handle it, the more it will fray. So when you get it on, clean it up and then leave it alone and you'll be just fine. So I'm really happy with my base. I did have a few extra pieces of the snow covered mesh. So I made two additional bundles and I just kind of snuck them in. And these I actually put on the inner rings, the center ring and the inner ring, just to kind of fill that center in a little bit more from the front. But I'm really happy with the base. Now to embellish our wreath, you're going to need one of these wood crosses you can pick up in the crafter square section. And then you're also going to need one of the laser wood words. I'm going to be using the word risen and you get to three of them per package and you can find these in the crafter square section up in the Easter crafting section. Now for my word risen, I'm going to get a good coat of white paint on that. But here on my cross, I took the hanger out. I want to fill this hole. I don't want to leave that hole. So I'm going to be using the lightweight spackling. You can pick this up at Dollar Tree over in their hardware section. I just take a small amount, push it in the hole, 
do it from the front and the back make sure it's completely filled and then just kind of wipe off anything that's extra so it looks nice and clean from both sides and you want to let that dry and set up before you stain this and I'm going to be using the Waverly Antique Wax to stain my cross I want it to still look like a wooden cross now to stain my cross I'm just going to dip in and then go over it small amount down and then rub it off My cross and my risen are completely dry. Now I'm going to attach my risen right here onto my cross. And I'm going to do that with a combination of the Aileen's Original Tacky Glue and Hot Glue. Now to attach our cross, I've glued on two full length pipe cleaners, one at the top and one at the bottom. This is what I'm going to be using to attach it. And I want to place it right in the middle up on top. I think that looks very pretty. And to attach this, you simply move apart the mesh until you can get down to the wire frame in the back and then you attach it to the wire frame in the back. And here you go, we are all complete. I'm very happy with the end result. I really do love the mixture of those two different types of mesh. It gives such a beautiful texture to your wreath. We're going to be using one of Dollar Tree's Easter Egg Wreath Forms. Now I like these wreath forms, they're a good size, they're nice and sturdy, and they only cost $1.25. You're also going to need a package of pipe cleaners cut in half. And you're also going to need some of their decorative mesh. Now this is what I call their snow covered mesh. They did get a nice box in the floral garden for spring that had several really pretty colors in it. So you'll need two rolls of yellow, lavender, spring green, blue, and then I also have pink. Now the pink I have came out of the Valentine's Day section. It's just what I had at home. But you can use whatever color combination you can find in your store. You will need a total of 10 of these rolls. Now these rolls of mesh are six inches at three yards. Their regular deco mesh is five yards, so these are a little shorter in length. I have all my mesh cut into strips of six inches. Now I'm going to be using my Bow Dabra. I do have arthritis and it makes it difficult for me to hold things. So I like to use this tool when I'm making bundles. If you don't have a bow maker to use, you can always use one of the pink clips you can get at Dollar Tree. Now with this mesh, one of my favorite methods is the ruffle method, and it's the standard ruffle method. You just start at one end and scrunch right down the center, pinch, either put it in a clip or your bow maker. Now we're going to be putting the three pieces in each bundle, and you want three different colors. Now when I cut my mesh, I just lay everything out on top of each other and cut it all at the same time. So
so it makes it very easy plus that way it stacks all the colors uh, in a row so I just take the top three and that way all of my bundles will be mixed because I have five colors and you take three at a time so it'll slowly mix through all the colors then you just want to pull it out wrap your pipe cleaner around the center get that nice and taunt I like to pull it down so I can get a good grip pinch right at the base and give a twist and then that is what your little bundle will look like now I absolutely love working with this mesh it has the feel of tulle and it has snow on it so the reason why it has snow on it is to give it that thicker texture which I really do like and this does not fray at all okay so I'll show you again you just start at one end scrunch right down the center and then either put it in a clip or your holder your bow holder and you want three pieces per bundle wrap your pipe cleaner around get it nice and secure and give a good twist now when you go to attach your bundles to your wreath form you're going to be attaching them to the two bars in the center now this has three uh, excuse me this has four sections and a section is between the two crossbars now because this is kind of an odd shape wreath you'll put about ten bundles in the top section here but then the other three will take about 15 bundles now while you're attaching it you simply take your pipe cleaners and you wrap it around those two bars in the center pull it to the back give a good twist pull your ends together and then push them forward once you get your wreath full you will not see the pipe cleaners from the front and that keeps your back looking nice and clean so just keep adding your bundles until you get your wreath base nice and full But I really like the look of this mesh and using it with the ruffle method because it gives it such a light, fluffy, airy look to it. Now I did have four extra bundles when I was done putting everything together and all I did was take those four and squeeze them in wherever I could. Now this is the sign that I've chosen to go on the wreath today. And I really do like it. I like this really pretty powdery blue. It stands out on the wreath. The background, as you can see, uh, the yellow really shows up and yellow and blue contrast each other really well. And that's why I've chosen this one. This truck also comes in pink. So if you've chosen a different color tone and pink would work better for you, you can always go that route. This is a new sign that I found this year at Dollar Tree. So to prepare your sign, you'll want to remove the jute cord here at the top that comes with the sign to hang it. And then you're going to need some floral wire. And I just put one through the hole and then wrap the other one around and twist it in the back. You need to leave those long enough that you can use it to attach it to your wreath. And then down here on each of the wheels on the back, I've glued on a full length pipe cleaner. This will make my sign nice and sturdy so it doesn't move, slide, or flap if it tends to get windy. And then as I place my sign here on top of my wreath, here where my uh, license plate is, I want that to be right here at the base of my wreath. Right at the base there where the opening is. that way this will be down a little bit I want to put a little bow right at the very top so I don't want my truck too high but I think that looks like a good placement now to get this attached all you do is separate your mesh 
and you take your pipe cleaners and your floral wire, you feed it through and you attach it to the wire frame in the back. Now you can attach it anywhere that you want to on that wire frame to get that sign to sit where you need it. I have my sign on and I'm really happy. It's nice and sturdy. It's not going to go anywhere. And I think it really stands out with the yellow in the background. We're going to work on the bow now. I pulled out two ribbons that I picked up at Dollar Tree and they are these two. They're both two and a half inches at nine feet. I'm going to start here with the blue and white check and I'm going to measure my tail at 8 inches, give a pinch, and twist as I come through. On your tails, the nice side of your ribbon should be facing up. When you come through to make your loops, the nice side of your ribbon should be facing down, so you need to twist as you come through. And I'm going to measure my loops at 4 inches, and I'm going to do two loops on either side. And now I'm going to go to this really pretty bunny ribbon. I think it's absolutely adorable. It has the back side of the bunny and pretty eggs with a little bit of glitter. Again, I'm going to measure my tail at 8 inches and pinch. I'm going to measure my loops at 4 inches and I'm going to do two loops on either side. You're also going to need a full length pipe cleaner. You want to slide that down on one side till you get up next to the dowel rods. I'm going to pull it up and then I always push my bow down so it's nice and stacked and tight in there and then I pinch and lift out. This helps keep your bow nice and stacked. Then I take my pipe cleaners and I'm going to wrap that around to the back and give it a good twist. Just make sure you get it nice and tight. Now I usually trim my tails once I get it onto my wreath. I have a better judgment of how long I want to leave my tails. So just open up your loops and fluff out your bow. And then we'll get it attached to the wreath. That's approximately what your bow should look like. So I want to place my bow right at the top. And then I will be fanning out my tails and trimming them so that they're short enough so that you can still see the sign really well. But I want the bow at the very top. And to attach it, you just take your pipe cleaners like you did with the sign, you separate your mesh, and you attach it to the wreath form in the back. I have my bow on, and I'm really happy with that. I did end up going in and trimming the tails uh, quite a bit shorter. I want to make sure I see my sign. Now, to finish decorating our wreath, we're going to add one more item. And I found this really pretty egg garland. You can pick it up at Dollar Tree in their Easter section. Now the eggs are really nice. They're done like the eggs that you can get in the six pack, but they're much smaller, which I like because they fit the size of the wreath better. So I'm going to take one of these and glue it right in the center of my bow there. 
And then I'm going to add the rest to the outside of the wreath and I'm just simply going to be hot gluing them into place. They're nice and light so I don't have to worry about them falling off. But I really like that. And here you go, we are all done. I got all my eggs glued in and I just used the one garland. Today I'm going to be using one of the 18 inch wreath forms from Dollar Tree. If you can't find an 18 inch wreath form, that's fine. You can always use one of the 14 inch wreath forms. You're also going to need some pipe cleaners that are cut in half. We're going to start with this mesh today. This comes out of the Easter section from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using three rolls at the same time. Now this is normally called the bubble or poof method. You just want to take the ends of each roll and pull them together. When I work with mesh like this and I'm working with multiple rolls, I like to put one out on either side of my body and then leave one on the table. It makes it easier while I'm working with it so it doesn't tangle with itself. Now I've been wanting to try this method with this rainbow mesh for a while so I'm kind of excited to see how pretty it's going to look with all those colors. Okay, so once you have all of your ends pulled together, you wanna to take your pipe cleaner and wrap it around. Pull the ends nice and tight, pinch and twist. Then you wanna take the ends, feed it in from the top down to the back. Then I'm going to wrap it around right here at the crossbar in the center. Give it a couple twists and then I'm going to take those pipe cleaners and feed them to the back. And then just wrap it around the mesh again. Twist it down tight. And then push the ends forward. And you can trim off some of this excess. But you don't want to go too short because it could pull back through. You're also going to need a ruler. You want to go ahead and grab all of your mesh at the same time and pull it out. You want to measure at eight inches, then pinch where the eight inch mark is. Grab your pipe cleaner and wrap it around at eight inches. Pull it nice and tight and give it a twist. So it is nice and secure on your mesh. Then go ahead and attach it to the center bar. You can cut off some of that excess. And then I just take those little ends and I push them forward. Once you get everything done, you're not going to see those from the front at all. And then you just keep doing that. You grab all three of your rolls. Measure at eight inches. Go ahead and pinch. Add your pipe cleaner. and attach to the center bar in the middle.
Now what I normally do is go ahead and fill up one section and then I go back and fluff out my poofs. And all that means is go through and just separate the three. As you go through and you poof out, fluff out your poofs, the only thing you want to be concerned with is the pink. Just make sure that it's rotated as you're moving them out so that it's not like always in the middle or always on one side. You just want to make sure that that is mixed. You have two others here that you know are the same, so those two don't matter. But to get an even mixture through your wreath, just move that pink from the middle to each side and then back. Okay, see how pretty that looks when you open them up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do a couple sections here and then fluff it out and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, I finished my first two sections. And that took the three rolls to do the first two sections. I'm really happy with how it's looking. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. And I really like doing this method with the striped mesh. I can see all the colors. I think it looks so pretty. Now, if you wanted it to look a little bit more blue, instead of using the pink, you can use a solid blue. And same thing with the yellow. If you want it to look a little bit more yellow, use a solid yellow. Now on the back here, you can see I just attached it to the center ring. Now this uh, wreath form only has three rings. If you have one that has four rings, you'll want to attach it to the two bars in the middle. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish getting the base on and then I'll come back and we'll move forward and decorate. base all done and I am extremely pleased with it. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. I am so glad that I tried the striped mesh with this method. I love it. I'm definitely going to be doing that again. So you can see my back is nice and clean. I keep my ends nice and clean and I keep them tucked forward. Now in each section of the wreath and the section is between the two crossbars. I put eight poofs. Because I'm using three rolls, eight poofs was sufficient. If you were only using two rolls at a time, you would need to do 10 poofs. You're also going to need one of these Easter signs from Dollar Tree. I thought this was so cute. I really loved it. I actually picked this up last year and I didn't get around to using it. So this year I'm doing it. I absolutely love this, but his little tail is just too small for me. So we're going to take that off and put a bigger one on. I didn't mean to remove all that paper, but that's okay. And then I'm going to put a nice big fluffy tail on there. He's just so darn cute, but his tail was too small. Now doesn't that look better with a nice big fluffy tail? Next you want to go ahead and remove the jute cord that is there to hang it. Then you want to string through some floral wire to the back. So one comes through the hole, one comes over the top, and then you twist them together so they're nice and tight. Then you need to leave uh, some long ends so that you can attach it to your wreath. Now I'm also going to add a couple pipe cleaners on here, full length.
You're going to want to let that glue fully set up. And if I need to, once I get it onto the wreath, if the bottom part doesn't sit the way I want it to, then I will attach a pipe cleaner on either side of the bottom piece as well. I got my sign on. I did go ahead and attach two pipe cleaners on this bottom part because it didn't want to lay correctly. And then all you do is you take the pipe cleaners and the floral wire, you feed it down through the deco mesh to the back, and then you just tie it onto the frame. Same thing with the wire. When you initially uh, put it on, don't tighten them down until you get your sign placed exactly where you want. Once that's accomplished, then you can go ahead and take any excess of the pipe cleaners and cut those off. And then tuck them down. It keeps everything nice and clean that way. Now I want to put one large bow right up here. I really like the mesh so much that I don't want to cover very much of it up. So I think one nice large bow up here is going to be great for this wreath. We're going to go ahead and work on that big bow now. I pulled out these three ribbons. I got all of them at Dollar Tree. Oh, nope, looks like this one I got at the 99 cent store. Uh, but I know Dollar Tree sells a pink sheer ribbon as well in their Easter section. So you could use that instead. This is pink and sheer and it does have a uh, outline of a flower there in white. This one I did get at Dollar Tree and it is their plaid in their Easter section. And then this one I also picked up at Dollar Tree. I absolutely love it. And it has the little Easter eggs and the little bunny butts. I also pulled out some small ribbons that I have. I have a really pretty glittered yellow ribbon, a glittered pink ribbon. And then I have this really pretty baby blue lace ribbon. All of these I did pick up at the Dollar Tree. Now today, uh, to make the bow, I'm going to be using the Deluxe Easy Bow Maker. I went ahead and picked one of these up. Uh, I do uh, suffer from arthritis in my hands, and sometimes it's really difficult to make the bows, especially when I want to make a really large one that's stacked. It's hard to hold it together all in my hand. So I picked up the Easy uh, Bow Maker, and we're going to try that out today. So the first ribbon I'm going to start with is this one with the bunny butts. Okay, so you go ahead and pinch where you want your tail. Go ahead and twist because the pattern is only on one side. Then draw out how long of a bow you want. There are measurements on this, which is really nice. It goes all the way up to 12 inches. I am going to go to, let's see, eight inches. Now this one I'm going to do a little bit smaller, so I'm only going to go to 7 inches. This one I'm going to pull to 6 inches. Okay. 
And I'm going to go back again with this ribbon. And measure this one out at five. And I'm just going to measure the sparkly ribbon as wide as the last bow that I did, which was five inches on each side. Now I have all my ribbons stacked. They've been all held together nicely for me. Just want to pinch right there in the middle. And you need one full pipe cleaner. I'm going to wrap it around the center there. We have it all pinched. Pull it really tight. Give it a couple twists. And you can go through and fluff out your bow. Open everything up. Spread those out. I got my bow all done. I think it looks so pretty. I did go ahead and add a little bit of these glittered berries right in the center. Now the last thing that I'm going to add are some of these speckled eggs and I picked up from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to simply hot glue them in around the wreath. And there you go. I got all my eggs in. I did use three packages of the speckled eggs. Well, I'm really happy with my result. For today's project, you can use either of these signs. They're new this year at Dollar Tree. I thought they were so cute. I really love the face on the bunny. I'm not real thrilled with the little feet that are hanging. So what I've done is I went ahead and took them off. This is the one I'm going to use today. And then the little holes here at the top of the feet, I filled them with this lightweight spackling. You can get this at Dollar Tree over in the hardware section. It's really soft and airy. So just push it in on either side until it fills the hole and then wipe off anything extra. And then before we glue them on, we're going to cover the holes here with the feet. But before we do that, I'm going to add some floral wire. And you can use any color. I prefer the silver. You just want to pull out a piece probably about 10 inches for each hole. then run it through the hole and then over the top like that pull it to the back and give it a good twist this is what we're going to use to attach the sign okay. so you want to do the same thing to the other side Now you can turn it back over and we can hot glue on our feet. Now depending on which one you're using, if you're using this one that says Happy Easter, that'll be a little bit easier to get the feet on there without covering up the words. On this one, the welcome comes over a little bit further, so you kind of have to tilt the foot a little bit more. But I still think that looks really cute. So just add some hot glue and get your feet placed. Now I think that looks 
much better rather than having them hang. And just by filling in the hole with the white, they're not as noticeable. Once you get this on the wreath and you get everything else on, you're not even going to notice it. You're also going to want to remove the jute cord that hangs the sign and replace it with floral wire, just like you did down here where the feet are. You want to do the same thing up here so that we can fully attach the sign to the wreath. You're going to need one of these new wreath forms that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. It is the egg wreath form and it is 15.3 inches in diameter. I was so happy to find this. You're also going to need several packages of this really pretty decorative mesh that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. Uh, their packages are still six inches by five yards. I thought this was absolutely gorgeous and will go perfect with the sign that I chose. I love that it has the blue, the yellow, and the pink. I will let you know when I'm done exactly how many packages of the decorative mesh that you're going to need. We're going to work on our bundles now. You're going to need some pipe cleaners cut in half. Then you want to cut your deco mesh into strips of 12 inches. Now the method that we're going to be using today is called the folded ruffle method. I designed this a couple years ago because I like to use Dollar Tree deco mesh, but I really don't like that it frays. So I tried to come up with methods and different ways of using it where you get little to no fraying. And this is one that works very well. So you want to take your 12 inch piece and you fold it over itself by about an inch, inch and a half, push it down, go to the side and then just like a regular ruffle you scrunch right up the center go ahead and pinch and then add your pipe cleaner pull that nice and tight to the back and give it a good twist to secure And that is what your little bundle looks like. I think it is so pretty, especially with this mesh. I think it looks like a little butterfly. Very cute. I'll show you one more time. Take your 12 inch piece of deco mesh and you want to fold it over itself by about an inch to an inch and a half. Push down, twist to the side, start at the bottom and scrunch right up the center. Pinch, wrap your pipe cleaner around to the back, pull nice and secure and give a good twist. And you get a cute little butterfly look. To attach your bundles to your wreath, you're going to be attaching them to the two bars in the middle. Just take your pipe cleaners, put them on either side of the bars in the mental, pull it to the back, get it nice and secure and give it a good twist or two. Then you can uh, trim your pipe cleaners. You want to leave about a half inch. And then I take my ends and I push them forward. This will keep the back of your wreath looking nice and clean. Okay, then you just push over and you keep adding until you fill in each section. Now each section on this wreath is different, so you'll have different amounts of bundles that go into each section. But just keep filling them in until you get it as full as you like. Okay, I'm going to work on this. I'll get a couple sections done and then I'll come back and show you my progress. I have finished the first two rolls and I'm almost halfway through. I am absolutely loving this. The color mixture with the striped mesh is absolutely gorgeous. And as you can see, there is no fraying from that deco mesh. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to finish getting the base done and then I'll be back and we will move forward. I have the base all done. I am very pleased with how it turned out. I really love the texture 
I love the way all the colors are mixed. I think it came out absolutely gorgeous. Now here on the back, you can see everything looks nice and clean by simply pushing your pipe cleaners forward. On the back here, you can see the four sections of the wreath. We have a small section up here and then three larger sections. In the small section up here at the top, it took 10 bundles. In the other three sections, it took 15 bundles. But I was pleasantly surprised that it only took four rolls of the deco mesh to cover the base of the wreath. I'm going to attach my sign now. I like my signs to sit right up on top of my mesh. And I think this is a perfect fit between the sign and the wreath. I'm going to place it right here. Now remember, we put the floral wire in both ears where the jute cord was to hang the sign. And when we did the feet, we added our floral wire down here. Now I'm going to be using those to attach my sign. And all I'm going to do once I have my placement is separate the deco mesh and feed that floral wire to the back and attach it to the wired wreath form. I got my sign on. I think he looks absolutely adorable. And here on the back at the top, I put half a pipe cleaner and gave it a little loop. This is what I'm going to use to hang it. So go ahead and set him aside. We're going to work on our bow now. I picked up uh, these two ribbon this year at Dollar Tree in their Easter section. It is by Offre. Um, I believe Michaels and Walmart also carry this brand. And let's see. Okay, and these rolls are one and a half inch by six feet. So I have the solid pink and this one that has really pretty different colored eggs on a white background. I'm going to start with the pink. Now I'm going to measure my tail at six inches and then pinch. And I'm going to be using my Easy Bow Maker here today. So you want to start by placing it between the two large dowel rods. Now because this ribbon is nice on both sides, you don't have to worry about twisting. And I'm going to measure my loops at four inches and I'm going to do two loops on either side at four inches. Once you have your two loops at four inches on either side, go ahead and measure out your tail again at six inches and trim. And now we're going to go to our cute ribbon here with the eggs. Measure your tail at six inches and pinch. Now this ribbon is nice only on one side. So once you come through the dowel rods, you want to grab your ribbon and twist it so that the knife side is facing down. Now on this, I'm going to measure at three inches. And I'm going to again do two loops on either side at three inches. Once you have both loops on either side at three inches, go ahead and measure out your tail at six. So you want half a pipe cleaner. Go ahead and slide that in under one side. Kind of pull it together. That's going to help me hold my bow in place. 
as I lift up. And you need to move it over so you're right in the center. Wrap it around and pull those pipe cleaners to the back. Get it nice and tight and give it a twist. Go ahead and trim off your pipe cleaners. Pull down your tails, make sure that the nice side is facing forward. So that's what your bow should look like. Now you're going to take uh, the egg ribbon here. I want to put a piece right around the center here. So just measure how much you need. Trim off a piece. And then I'm going to fold the sides in. take the folded side down and wrap it right around the center. Pull it to the back and hot glue down. Pull the top over and hot glue that down as well. And then just trim off any excess ribbon. That makes it look in the front. We're going to attach our bow now. And I'm simply going to hot glue my bow right here at the tip of his ear. I think that is just the perfect spot. Absolutely adorable. Now the final item that I'm going to add to the wreath is I pick up a package of these really cute little foam eggs. You get 12 pieces in a package. This is their pastel package. So I'm going to be adding some of these eggs and I'm just going to glue them in around where the mesh is. Now each of the eggs has a little ribbon in it. If you just grab and slightly pull, it comes right out. And just add a small amount of hot glue and place your eggs wherever you would like them. Just kind of nestle them down into the mesh. And there you go, we are all done. I think those foam eggs were the perfect final touch for this wreath. All of the materials that I used to create this wreath came from Dollar Tree, making this very budget friendly. Uh, today we're gonna do something a little different, so I'm excited to get into this craft. You're also going to need uh, two of the sequence sheets that you can pick up in the Easter section at Dollar Tree. They come six inches by 10 inches. 
This is what we're going to use to cover our ear. So you'll need one sheet per ear. So I found the best way to go about doing that is to first make a template. That way it makes it much easier for me to get the correct size for each ear. So I just have a piece of copy paper. I'm going to put an X so I know which side is up once I get it cut out. And then just go ahead and trace. Here on your sequence sheet, you want to turn that facing down. And then on your bunny ear, the part that you marked that's the front should face down as well. Then you want to trace out and cut out each of your ears. You want to leave a little extra space because we're going to be gluing this onto the bunny frame. I have my ears cut out. Now you do need a good pair of scissors to cut this out because you're not only cutting through the fabric, you're also cutting through the sequence. And to make my life a little easier here on the back, I did mark which one went on the left side and which one went on the right side. So I make sure I glue it down properly. Once you have your placement, you can start to glue it down. Just add a small amount of hot glue right onto the wreath frame. Just do small sections at a time. Now it's best to glue down your bottom do a little on this side and then do a little on this side. You want to make sure that you keep that covered as you work your way up. If you do one full side, you may end up shifting and then not have enough to cover the other. So just do a little bit on each side as you work your way up. I got my ears glued on. And I do recommend putting a piece of paper or something underneath because the glue is going to drip. So it's better to just be able to peel off a piece of paper than try to pick it off your table. Here on the back, I'm cleaning up a little bit. Wherever there's enough room of excess fabric, I'm just adding a little bit more hot glue to the outside. And then I'm just folding that up kind of wrapping it around to the back. Just be careful, don't burn yourself. If you don't have enough to wrap around and it doesn't look like you have a nice shape there, then just go in with your scissors and you can clean it up that way. A little bit more trimming. But just do your best to get a clean line all the way around. I think that looks good. Now we're going to work on filling in the bottom here. And I have the white snow covered mesh that you can get from Dollar Tree. My store had a ton of the decorative mesh left over from the 4th of July. This is when they were having shipping issues and it all showed up after. So we had a ton. Uh, I picked up four rolls for this project. I figure it'll take three to four rolls. I'll let you know when I'm done. You want to cut your mesh into strips of six inches. I have my mesh cut at six inches. Now you're going to need two pieces per bundle. We're going to be doing the standard ruffle method. I really like doing this method with this mesh. 
Now this mesh has more of a feel of tulle and then it has like fake snow on it. And I like it. I like this a lot. I like the feathery look that it gives your wreath. It also does not fray at all, which is wonderful. And having that uh, fake snow on it gives it a lot more thickness and texture. So I really do like working with this. And they've been coming out with this mesh for every season. So if you can't find the white, you can always do it in pink or any other Easter color that you'd like. Okay, so I have my six inch piece. Just start at one end and scrunch all the way across to the other. This is called the standard ruffle method. You will need two pieces per bundle. Now if you can't hold it in your hand, you can also use a clip or a bow maker. Take your pipe cleaner, wrap it right around the center. I like to pull everything forward so I can get a good grip. You want to pinch right at the base so you get it nice and tight and twist. And that is what your little bundle will look like. I'll show you one more time. You need two pieces. Start at one end and just scrunch down the center to the other. Now you can hold it in your hand or you can use a little clip. You will need two pieces per bundle. And if you cannot find the sequence to do the ears, you can always use a really pretty fabric. Dollar Tree always has a really pretty spring colored fabrics, maybe something floral, a solid color, whatever you're feeling that time. And whatever you can find in your store. Okay, I'm gonna work on getting some of my bundles done and then we'll come back and start attaching. We're gonna to start to attach our bundles now. And we're going to be attaching them on the two bars on the inner part of the ring. So just take your pipe cleaners, wrap it around either side of those two bars, pull them together, give a good twist or two. Just feel a little long, I'm gonna trim them down and then tuck them forward. That always keeps the back of your wreath looking nice and clean. pretty that's going to look when that is all filled in nice and soft and fluffy which is exactly what I think a bunny should look like. I have my base all done it's so nice and fluffy and soft looking which is exactly the look I was going for. Now I wanted to show you here on the ears since they're sequence one side is white and the other side is like an iridescent that shows pink so this is one of the reasons why I chose this material. So if I push everything one way, it's white, and then I can go back in and draw down the center and look at that. Isn't that adorable? Just a little something fun on your wreath. Very cute. I'm going to make a bow now. I pulled this ribbon out that I picked up at Dollar Tree this year. This is one and a half inches at six feet. I thought it was super sweet with the little bunny and it says Happy Easter. You're also going to need a full length pipe cleaner. You will need to cut three pieces of ribbon at 13 inches and one piece of ribbon at about three to four inches. I have my ribbon cut. So on two of the longer pieces, you want to pull the ends together. You want to cover them by about an inch. Press down to find the center.
I'm just going to add two little drops of hot glue to keep that together. Okay, then you want to take your two pieces and you're going to scrunch them in the center. Place it side by side. Find the center of the third piece. Scrunch. And add that. Then take your pipe cleaner, wrap it around the center, pull it to the back and give a good twist. And pull down your tails and open up your loops. So that's what your bow should look like. Now we're going to take this little piece and fold it in. This is what we're going to use to wrap around the center. Just make sure that your pipe cleaners in the back are open. And there you go. Really sweet, cute little bow. Now I want to take my bow and I want to place it kind of off on one side. And I'm most likely going to trim my tails. I think a little shorter will look better. But before I place that, I want to add um, some florals and a little bit of greenery up here near the top. So I pulled out some of this. This is lamb's ear. I picked this up at Walmart. And you get two stems for $2. I really like this. It's a very high-end looking greenery. Very, very pretty. It's nice and soft and fuzzy, which I think is perfect to go on a bunny. I pulled out a stem here of this. I got this at Dollar Tree. It's called Dogwood. And then I also picked up some white baby's breath. And then I pulled this out. It is wildflowers and it is a really pretty pink and I like that it's a little bit darker than the other pink. Now to prepare these, you just need to cut a short stem. You only need to leave an inch and a half to two inches. And I'm not going to put a lot, so I'm only going to cut maybe um, two or three pieces of each of the florals. Like I like this one, it has a bloom, another bloom, and a couple pieces of greenery. I like that, and then this one has some greenery on it. So let's see. I want to find two that are relatively the same so I can put one on either side. So I'm going to go for these. I have two that are the same. And then I'll probably glue in a little bit more so I'm going to cut a couple more of these. On this one, I want one that has multiple leaves on it. So like this piece has three leaves, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And then I'm just going to cut two larger single leaves to help fill in. Now this mesh does like to stick to itself. So I like to go through and just kind of fluff it out. You just need to grab it and kind of pull it apart if it looks like it's bunching up. 
or if the shape isn't even, just go through and kind of play with it till you get it to where it looks good to you. thinking about there. So what's kind of going behind? So I'm going to start by placing my two larger green. Once I've decided where I want to put my bow, which is here, then a little bit on either side, I'm going to start to glue in a little bit of greenery there. And then I'm going to build on top of that. I'll add some of the lighter blooms. Then go in with a little bit of a darker and then fill in with a little bit of white and my last little bit of greenery. Now you want to make sure that as you're placing them, you remember the bow is going to go there so you want to make sure you can still see those florals. And then I'll probably do the sides and then get my bow on and then do a little bit maybe here on top of the bow. Now to get these in, you're just going to hot glue them once you find your placement. Add a small amount of hot glue. And then just nestle it down inside the mesh. You want to make sure that it gets good contact so when the glue sets up it's going to stay put. I'm going to work on this side first and then I'll repeat on the opposite. I think that looks really pretty. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, get my bow on, and if I want to, I'll fill in a little bit more. I have my bow on and my florals, and I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Very soft and springy. Perfect for a girl bunny. Now for my final addition, you'll need one of these large wood hearts. These are one of the DIY wood stickers. You can also get wood hearts in the little packages. You want a large one in a pale pink. Glue a full length pipe cleaner onto the back. Then you want to twist it together for a little bit. This is going to be our nose. You're going to place that upside down and it's going to go right down here. Just take your pipe cleaners, feed it through your mesh, and attach it to the wreath form in the back. And here you go. We are all finished. I think it's so adorable. Very sweet little bunny wreath for spring and Easter. I think the little heart nose was the perfect final addition for my bunny wreath. And there you go. My top 10 Easter wreaths. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and I hope it gave you lots of ideas to make that perfect Easter wreath. Thanks so much for stopping by. It's always a pleasure. If you enjoy craft tutorials and hauls, you're going to want to check out these other videos. Have a great day. Take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video.